say that. <laughs> Tonight, I want to talk to you about the theme of this year's International Women's Day celebration. Be bold for change. It has been said that whatever you can do or dream, you can begin it. Boldness has genius, power, and magic in it. In the summer of 1964, the Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party was organized with the purpose of challenging Mississippi's all-white and anti-civil rights delegation to the Democratic National Convention. They failed to represent all Mississippians. Fannie Lou Hamer was elected vice chair of the Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party. She was a tireless proponent of civil rights and voting rights. Born in Mississippi, Hamer was the youngest of 20 children and grew up picking cotton as a sharecropper. She suffered such injuries as a forced hysterectomy in the 60s, jailing on false charges, and horrific beatings in the name, just to name a few. Hamer worked with the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, SNCC. Now, her job in Mississippi was to organize throughout the South and in Mississippi so that blacks could vote. At the time, and this was in 1964, about 7% of the black population in Mississippi was registered to vote. So she was instrumental in the Freedom Summer, working with SNCC, of registering over 66% of blacks in Mississippi. She became known as the woman who sang hymns because of her affinity for inspiring others through song. She was also credited with the powerful statement, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Since 1890, most blacks had been disenfranchised in Mississippi by the Constitution, by laws that raised barriers to voting, by poll taxes and literacy and comprehension tech tests assessed by white registrars. They were also lose jobs trying to vote. They would also lose their life trying to vote. And so voting in Mississippi became a very, very dangerous enterprise. Now back to 1964. That year, the Democratic Convention was held in Atlantic City, New Jersey. The Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party's efforts drew national attention to the plight of blacks in Mississippi because while most of you are too young <laughs> to know this history, uh, in 1964, the Freedom Summer was the most violent time during the Civil Rights Movement, and in fact, uh, three civil rights m uh, workers were murdered in Mississippi about four days before this convention. So all of the, tension, the attention was drawn to what was going on with blacks in the South, and particularly blacks in Mississippi. Now, the Democratic Party was a party of what we, we now know, or what we used to call Dixiecrats, and so they did not want this Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party to sit at the convention. But they were asked to present their credentials because so many people had registered and they had the numbers. So Fannie Lou Hamer was voted and she was the one who was supposed to go and present her the credentials so that they could sit and vote at the National Democratic Convention. Well, what Fannie Lou Hamer did was she told people her story. She told them about her beatings in Winona when she tried to register. She was beat so brutally that she would probably later die of those injuries, having been beat in jail. And she said to, this, to the group, all of this on account, we want to register to become first class citizens. And if the Freedom Democratic Party is not seated now, I question America. Is this America, the land of the free and the home of the brave, where we have to sleep with our telephones off the hooks because our lives be threatened daily because we want to live as decent human beings in America? Well, President Johnson became very fearful of this powerful, powerful testimony by uh, Fannie Lou Hamer. And in fact, what he did was he diverted National Network News at the convention because he didn't want anyone to hear her or see what she had to say. But it wasn't to happen. In fact, many of the television networks ran her speech and un an unedited version of the speech, the Credentials Committee received thousands of calls and letters in support of the Freedom Democrats. Of course, future negotiations with the uh, Democratic Party were without Hamer, and the compromise was modified such that the convention 
would select the two delegates to be seated at large with no voting rights. The Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party rejected the compromise with Hamer when she made this most famous quote, we didn't come all this way up here to compromise for more than what we've gotten here. We didn't come all this way for no two seats when all of us is tired. In 1968, the Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party was finally seated after a clause was adopted which demanded equality of representation by all of the state's delegations. In 1972, Hamer was elected as a National Party delegate. Boldness has genius, power, and magic in it. Later on, Fannie Lou Hamer would run for Congress. She ran twice and failed to win. She later extended her fight for fairness by becoming a philanthropist and working with such organizations as Head Start and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s Poor People's Campaign, among others. She remains an inspiration to me to this day and for most people who are fighting against adverse circumstances. You see, my grandfather was a cotton farmer in Kosciuszko, Mississippi. He owned his farm for over 30 years. He paid taxes for 30 years, and he had never voted. He had never even attempted to register to vote in Kosciuszko, Mississippi, because the Kosciuszko, Mississippi is about 45 miles from where the three civil rights workers were killed. And so nobody in that town was going to register to vote or even attempt to register to vote with white registrars. So my grandfather vote, voted. And guess what? I went into the vote voting booth with him. So the first time my grandfather ever voted, I accompanied him into the booth because he really couldn't read that well. But he wanted me to read the ballot because he had to make sure that he put his initials on the right candidate's name. So what I tell you is that hands that picked cotton can now pick legislators. Fannie Lou Hammer was a bold leader, willing to take on difficult and challenging goals. She focused on the America outside of Mississippi. She was innovative, and she challenged the President of the United States on national television for the world to see. She was fearless. Powerful change can result from bold leadership. There are 2,300 prosecutors' offices in this country. 95% are elected to office, 79% of those prosecutors are white men. Three in five states have no black elected prosecutors. 14 states have no elected prosecutors of color at all. Just 1% of elected prosecutors are minority women. Nationally, police departments are more diverse than prosecutors' offices. In 2002, I was appointed New York City Human Rights Commissioner by Mayor Bloomberg. I was going through some boxes that were left in the office and I came across a photograph. And this photograph was a photograph of Fannie Lou Hamer standing with Ella Baker, standing with Eleanor Holmes Norton at the National Democratic Convention in Atlantic City. Now, for those of you who don't know, Ella Baker was the one who organized and founded SNCC. Was never given the credit she should have been given, but she organized SNCC. Eleanor Holmes Norton was my predecessor at the Human Rights Commission, and she was also the attorney that got Fannie Lou Hamer out of jail in Winona, Mississippi, after she had been beaten. And Fannie Lou Hamer was, grew up in the county next to mine in Mississippi, so I grew up knowing who she was. So I looked at that picture, and I thought, wow, this is really something. I had to come to New York to see this picture. All bold women. And at that very moment, I knew what my path was to be. So in December of 2016, I took the bold step of deciding to run for District Attorney of Kings County. It's an enormous undertaking, to say the least. I'm running because, like Fanny, I believe that bold leadership to bring about great change. I've witnessed this fact in my life. Like Fanny, I question America and her system of justice that is fraught with inequities and lacks fundamental fairness, a system of justice that criminalizes the poor, addicted, confused, and disillusioned. So like Fanny, 
I'm running to legitimize the system because I believe in America and I believe that we can change. And like Fanny, it's time for us to get this right. Thank you. Mm -hmm.